If you are experiencing severe shoulder pain that impacts your quality of life, you may have been recommended to try a cortisone injection in the shoulder to provide symptom relief. But what if I told you that cortisone injections are not the best option? Recent research suggests that platelet-rich plasma treatments may provide superior pain relief and functional improvement with longer-lasting effects. In this video, we'll examine the differences between cortisone and platelet-rich plasma injections and explore the pros and cons of each treatment option. We'll discuss the results of a few recent clinical studies that look to compare the two treatments to see which is superior for improving pain and function. In addition, I'll share my own recommendations based on my experience as a sports medicine physician. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Peng here. Cortisone injections are a common treatment option for patients with shoulder pain. They can provide quick relief by reducing inflammation and improving mobility and function. Cortisone shots are are often recommended for patients who have tried other conservative treatment options such as physical therapy or oral medications but continue to have persistent pain. Additionally, cortisone shots can be an effective option for patients who are not candidates for surgery or who prefer to avoid surgery. While these injections are not a permanent solution for shoulder pain, they can provide temporary and significant relief and may allow patients to resume their normal activities without the need for more invasive treatments. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. This is a concentrated solution of platelets and growth factors that are derived from your own blood. It is an in-office procedure that first involves a blood draw into a special tube. This tube is then placed in a centrifuge to separate the platelets from the other components of your blood. Once the platelets are isolated, they are drawn up into a syringe and injected under ultrasound guidance into an affected area. The entire process takes less than one hour and is done under local anesthesia. The goal of platelet-rich plasma treatment is to promote healing and tissue remodeling by stimulating the body's natural repair mechanisms. PRP injections can potentially provide long-lasting pain relief and may be more effective for certain types of shoulder injuries. However, PRP injections are not covered by insurance and can be expensive. Both of these studies are systematic reviews and meta-analyses looking to compare cortisone injections to platelet-rich plasma treatment. Systematic reviews and meta-analyses are very important clinical tools because they pull together the result of multiple studies. This helps to reduce bias and increase the statistical power of analysis, which can lead to more precise estimates of treatment effects. The first study looked to see how PRP compared to cortisone for rotator cuff disease, which includes shoulder impingement, rotator cuff tendinopathy, and rotator cuff tears. They compiled and analyzed data from nine studies and found that in the short term, cortisone injections were superior to PRP for pain and functional scores. However, in the long term, platelet-rich plasma produced better outcomes. The next study found similar results. They looked at clinical trials specifically comparing PRP to cortisone for rotator cuff tears and included 16 studies in their analysis. They found that there were no differences between PRP and cortisone for short-term pain relief and functional improvement. However, in the long term, PRP again produced better outcomes. So from these two systematic reviews and meta-analyses, it really does seem like platelet-rich plasma is the better long-term option. But does this imply that everyone should be getting PRP injections? Not necessarily. There are several other variables each person needs to consider. Cost is the first and most obvious consideration consideration. Platelet-rich plasma injections are not covered by insurance, and according to this study, the average cost of PRP treatments in the United States is around $700 per injection. This may not be affordable for everyone. In contrast, cortisone injections are pretty much always covered by insurances. In addition, there are a few clinical scenarios where someone may not be a good candidate for platelet-rich plasma. One such instance is when a patient has underlying cardiovascular disease such as coronary artery disease or has experienced a stroke. This is because these patients are typically prescribed antiplatelet agents such as aspirin or clopidogrel. Administering PRP injections to these patients is not advisable as they may need to discontinue their antiplatelet medications for around four to six weeks. This could significantly increase their risk for a major cardiovascular event. People with systemic inflammatory disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis may also want to opt for cortisone. Patients with these 
conditions often experience pain in multiple joints and body parts and may require taking daily NSAIDs or even low-dose steroids to manage their symptoms. The same is true for people who are undergoing other medical procedures or surgeries. These patients may need to take NSAIDs for other reasons and unfortunately, that would interfere with the effects of platelet-rich plasma. By the way, if you're enjoying this content so far, please do me a favor and click the like button. It will tell YouTube to spread the video to more people and help them too. Thanks for doing that. I really appreciate it. Okay, so what do I recommend to my patients? I still recommend cortisone injections for most people with rotator cuff disease that are not responding to conservative treatment. The reason is because it is cheap and it's effective. In addition, shoulder pain is incredibly complicated. It is not uncommon for one of my patients to have an MRI reporting that they have signs of shoulder impingement, rotator cuff tendinopathy, rotator cuff tear, biceps tendonitis, shoulder arthritis, and a labral tear. One of the benefits of using cortisone injections as the first line of injection treatment is that they can serve as both a therapeutic and a diagnostic tool. By injecting cortisone and numbing medicine into the area where we think the pain is coming from, we can assess whether the injection provides symptom relief. If the injection is successful and symptoms improve, it is considered to be a positive diagnostic test. However, if there is no change in symptoms after a cortisone injection, it is likely that the pain is not originating from that specific area and we need to continue searching for the source of the pain. One concern with using PRP injections as a diagnostic tool is that they can be much more expensive than cortisone injections. For this reason, I typically recommend using cortisone injections first to diagnose and potentially treat the problem, and if the patient's pain persists or recurs, we can then move on to a better long-term solution such as platelet-rich plasma. The last thing I want to say is that injection therapy is just one part of a treatment plan for shoulder pain and rotator cuff pathology. An exercise program focused on strengthening and rehabilitation is equally, if not more, important. In the next video, I'll explain how rotator cuff pathology can cause pain and discuss the exercises that can help alleviate it. Alternatively, if you're interested in learning more about platelet-rich plasma, check out this video next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.